This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. But I want to mention something about this, this kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is, is what brings us to an understanding that, that the kingdom of God is, is, is how we are to operate. We are to operate under this position of His authority. He is the king, and we are subject to Him. So with that in mind, I want to look at this and, and, and recap a little bit of this idea of your kingdom come. Now, there are six petitions that happen in the Lord's Prayer, and this is the first one. There's your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts or our sins as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the evil one. And we're going to take a look at these six petitions. But this first one, the kingdom come, is uh, the kingdom is described in a number of different ways in the Bible. It's described as the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ and God, the kingdom of his beloved son. Uh, in Revelation, it's called the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. It's all, it's all basically referring to the same thing. And we tend to think of the kingdom of God as something that, that is later in life. After we die, we go to the kingdom, that that's heaven. But that's not the principle. The kingdom of God is something that happens now here on earth. You are to live within the kingdom of God now. The kingdom of God is relative to you now. It's not, it's not talking about heaven. It's not talking about a place. It's talking about something that happens in your life now. And that was so confusing to the Jews. Because when, when, uh, when, when they heard that the Messiah had come and that the kingdom of God was at hand, they got all excited because their understanding was that the Roman government was going to be overthrown and that the Messiah would set up rule and that uh, everybody would recognize that, uh, that they could live in peace and harmony under the authority of God. And they were excited about this, and when it didn't happen, they were very, very disappointed. And that's one of the reasons why Jews today have so much trouble believing that Jesus is the Messiah, because they believe that that's what the Messiah is going to do. And He is going to come back, and He is going to establish His, his rule on earth. No question about that. The Bible teaches that. But He's already established... The, the, the first level, if you will, which is the kingdom of God on earth, which is something that we're to enjoy, this something that is to be established in our lives. And Jesus basically said, the kingdom of God isn't about armies. It isn't about crusades and conquests and battlefields. The kingdom of God extends beyond the boundaries of this world, and therefore it's not limited or contained by the definitions of the world. And Jesus basically said it this way in Luke 17, 21. The kingdom of God is within you. And that means that God establishes himself in your life as your authority. He becomes your boss. We call it lordship. He becomes the Lord of your life. And Jesus said that. And not only did it really bother the Jews because they wanted their king to set things up and overthrow the government. Um, but he, but it really irked the religious establishment when he said things like in Matthew 5.20 where he said, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, which would be the Sadducees, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. That was a really, really irked the Pharisees. Because what he was saying is, it's not about how, what rules you follow and that you do things every, in a strict way, but it's about a connection where God is the authority in your life. And is leading you and directing you to what he wants to accomplish in and through your life. What he was saying was that the kingdom of heaven isn't about political rule or about religious rule. It's not about how religious you act or how much of the scriptures that you know. It's not about um, positions. It's not about certain uh, uh, attainments, that sort of thing. It's really about God being in control of your life. When Jesus teaches us to pray, your kingdom of your kingdom come. What is he saying? What, is, what does he mean by your kingdom come in my life? Well, Romans 14, 17 says this. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. In other words, it's not physical. But of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And what he was saying was that the kingdom of God is not physical. It's not a place. But it is about righteousness. Those are the things that we do because we are holy. We're called by God, set apart for His purpose, His plan. And because of peace, in other words, that's this restored, quiet peace. That's really what the word means. 
and joy, which is the word chara, which means delight and illumination. And it's a sense, it's not about happiness. It's not about, you know, it's not about like, yippee, look, I'm so excited. I got hit by a car. That's not joy. Joy is the sense that I, that God is in control and I can rest in that. And there's this illumination. If you will take me and realize that this is just an example. But it's the idea that you're in a dark room and you can't see what's around you. And if you can't see what's around you, sometimes there's fear because of that. You don't know what's happening, what's coming, what's, what's going, what's next, what is, what is going on. Joy is like this illumination where you begin to see things finally in a whole different light. And actually the word is often used for the word light. And it's this idea that I can see things in a, from a different perspective and I have a joy. A sense that God is in control and I can rest in that. I can find delight and fulfillment in that. Even in the difficult times of my life. That's why somebody can stand by a casket. Not be happy about it, but have joy. Recognizing that God is in control and I can see things from a different perspective from somebody who doesn't have that insight. Somebody who doesn't have that understanding because they don't have that connection with, with God. That is kingdom. That's what, that's what Jesus is saying. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what a kingdom is. It's righteousness and peace and joy. And whenever or wherever God's kingdom or His Lordship is found, there will be changed people. People who know the kingdom of God in their life, where they're under the authority and rule of God in their life, are changed people. People who know Jesus as Lord of their lives and have discovered the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives are different people from everybody else. And the kingdom of heaven is, uh, is the willing acceptance of God's rule within our life. The willing acceptance of God's rule within our lives. It's a kingdom of grace. It's a kingdom of forgiveness. And Lord knows that every one of you needs grace. And every one of you needs forgiveness. And every one of you needs mercy. And so I need to, under that includes me. And so because I'm a person that needs grace, and I understand that you also are a person that needs grace, I treat you differently. I'm a person who needs mercy. And because I know that you're a person who needs mercy, I'm going to treat you differently. I'm a person who's been forgiven. And if you're a person who's been forgiven, I'm going to treat you differently. I have a whole different attitude and connection with you because I know that we're operating under a kingdom. And we have a boss, we have a Lord, we have somebody who is over our lives. And that kingdom changes our lives, my life and your life. It changes the way that we connect with each other. It changes our homes. It changes the way we do business. It changes the way we treat ourselves. It changes the way we treat our families. It changes the way we treat our friends. It changes the way that we connect with other people that we don't know. Because we already have this perspective of who we are in God. And it gives us a sense of destiny. We understand that we're here on earth at this point, at this place in history, because God is up to something in our lives through our lives. He didn't put us here a thousand years ago. He didn't save us for a thousand years from now. He put us here now because he has something he wants to accomplish in our lives now. And the people that he connects us with are part of that process that God is up to. So I'm part of your life, you're part of my life because God is up to something that he wants to do in and through our lives. And we need each other. We're part of each other. We're part of what God is doing. That's so incredibly important to understand. It changes the way we think. It changes the way we live. That's why in Colossians 1, verses 13 and 14, it says that the kingdom of God hinges on our relationship with God, which changes everything. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of sin. Do you understand what that verse is saying? That verse is saying that you, to, to get saved, you transfer ownership of your life. He becomes the king of your life. You were living in darkness, but He reached into the darkness of your life and transferred you into the kingdom. Now, if there's a kingdom, there has to be a king. And the king is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the boss. He's the authority. And we are living under that lordship in our lives now. And because he's Lord of our lives, he provides redemption and the forgiveness of sins. So, now, Jesus, that's just the second thing that Jesus is talking about. You know, he's talking about the, you know, the, our Father and, and, and how it be your name and your kingdom come. That's just the beginning of the prayer.
Thank you.